I'm Professor Maria Rosa. I am a professor in the biology department at Connecticut College. We're here down at the waterfront well, where I am working on a restoration project, uh, putting in reef balls as part of a base for a living shoreline. So a living shoreline is the idea of using living structures to protect the shoreline from things like erosion as well as providing habitat. Well, the reef balls are these structures here. They are made out of um, concrete. So we use a mix of Portland concrete, gravel, and sand. We also use silica and silicate. Uh, this is uh, like a fiber and a way to kind of pH balance. What that means is that it makes it um, good for organisms to settle on. So for the last 30 years or so, they've been used extensively in the Caribbean, um, in places as far as like Tanzania and Africa, uh, down in Belize and the Dominican Republic, etc. So we know how they work as a base for coral reefs, but here in Connecticut and colder water systems, uh, there hasn't been that many projects. So it's the first time it's being used in this kind of scale, the small size in a temperate or more cold water system. Well, a lot of this is um, with student volunteers. Students help to not just build the reef balls, but they help to deploy it, as you're seeing here right now. Um, and then over time in my classes, I have students who uh, will come down here and monitor the changes. And I also have independent study students who have different projects. So students get to both um, examine what's happening and also create their own independent projects around the reef balls. So my name is Mitchell Lockwood. Uh, I'm a senior at Connecticut College. Uh, I'm a bio major, psych minor, um, and my project this summer was working on these reef balls. We built around 40 of them this summer. Um, finally putting them in today is honestly really rewarding to see how much like work we did this summer and how much support we're getting from the school, especially with all this new waterfront docks and everything being put in. Um, it feels good to have our own little place down here on the waterfront. The school is really backing what we're doing and they're really proud of the work that we've accomplished over this past year and this summer. So it, it means a lot to, to have that support. So one of the issues that we have with sea level rise is that as it rises, you're getting more wave action kind of hitting the shore and eroding away your shore and getting rid of your shoreline. Uh, one of the things that the uh, reef balls do is they kind of help the shoreline keep up with sea level rise, meaning that um, it attenuates wave energy. So as the waves hit the reef balls, they slow down. And when you slow down the currents, then the sediments can fill in. So over time you kind of get the sediment build up. So if you look behind us, you can already kind of see the places where some sediment has built up in, um, in the area where we've put in the reef balls uh, last October. So over time, these are going to be buried. So we're going to be able to reclaim uh, more of our shoreline that has been lost to erosion. So you can easily see this at low tide. So if you notice most of the stuff here is cobble right but here right in front of the reef balls you can see that it's sediment so all the cobbles have been buried so all this is new sediment that has built up so you kind of have to go further down to find the cobble so it's already burying so if you look here you can see where how the shoreline kind of goes in a little so at low tide we have two to three feet more of more sediment than we did last year um, over time, a lot of marsh grass has been lost either due to pollution or habitat uh, loss. So restoring um, that crucial habitat is very important. So having that, giving it a fighting chance by providing kind of the baseline for the reef uh, is very important. Mamacoke Marsh, which is on the other side, is part of um, the Connecticut College Arboretum. It is one of the uh, last remaining unditched marshes in Connecticut, so it's a huge deal. It's a great learning um, place. We take our students there, volunteers um, go there as well, and it's open trails for people. So originally this used to be part of a fringing marsh that connected to Mamacoke. Uh, I'm hoping that eventually we can restore that. So my name is Melvin Alvarez. I'm a grant program associate with 11th Hour Racing. And this is why we are supporting ecosystem restoration. This salt marsh grasses here 
are an example of what ecosystem restoration is about. This restoring healthy salt, salt marshes help us address directly address climate change by drawing carbon out of the atmosphere and putting it down on its roots uh, where it's safely stored and uh, where it also helps build a healthy ecosystem. This marshes is habitat for a lot of birds and other native species um, that are, make our region more resilient and healthy. So my hope for this particular immediate area is to return closer to what we used to have, which was a fringing marsh. Uh, that is a healthy ecosystem that can maintain itself. So basically without us continuing to kind of always spending money, time and energy to keep it going, it will be a self-sustaining reef. So it will mimic or go back closer to what we used to have before human interference. And then if that works, seeing how we can apply that to other places and start conserving and restoring other areas.